Welcome back to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing magnetics design and uh, we saw how uh, we can design inductors. Now let us take an example of inductor design. So we need to design an inductor for a buck converter and let us say we have to design it, uh, uh, design the inductance uh, for 100 micro Henry. And the average inductor current uh, for that particular converter is 8 amperes and the ripple allowed is this 0.625 amperes. Output power that means the total power output power here is 100 watt and the switching frequency chosen is 100 kilohertz. And then for the design of the inductor uh, let us say the current density this is chosen as this 3 into 10 power 6 ampere per meter square and the operating flux density is chosen as 0.25 tesla and for the design we choose ferrite core and that is uh, reasonable because for this uh, frequency range uh, ferrite is uh, very very suitable so that is the material that is uh, chosen and a window utilization factor of 0.4 is taken and further uh, it, the specification is chosen such that the temperature rises 15 degrees C. So, whatever we design it should be such that the temperature rise is below 15 degrees C. So, what do we do? We first calculate the area product and uh, for that uh, uh, what we have to do? We have to first calculate the peak current. So, you know the equation to calculate the peak current. So, you substitute here and uh, you obtained uh, this is the value of the peak current then we calculate the energy. So, energy will be half L i L peak square. So, again we substitute all the values and this is uh, what we get 3.45 milliwatts. Then uh, now we have everything for the area product. So, we know this energy we know K u B m and uh, J m. So, this is the area product that we are going to obtain. Now, uh, after you obtain the area product, uh, you can Google, you can find out the various uh, cores that are available and what are the area products of them. And you have to choose a core which has an area product uh, somewhat greater than what you have calculated. So, uh, we have done that and uh, we came up with this E42 core uh, core selection and the dimensions of that core are uh, shown here. So, these are the dimensions you can see here that uh, this is the, the width of uh, the central limb. So, all these various dimensions are shown here and uh, what is the winding area in um, mm square minimum winding width average length of the turn and area product all that is given here for this chosen core. Further uh, all the other parameters related to the core then um, uh, you can find out and that is what uh, is noted down here the magnetic path length, the core weight and uh, uh, then your um, uh, mean length turn. Then further the cross sectional area of the core, the window area, area product, the surface area AT and the permeability of the material and also the core dimensions. Then next step is what is uh, to do calculations for uh, the wire selection. So, for that you have to calculate the RMS of the current. So, that is what uh, has been done here using this uh, equation and approximately 8 ampere is uh, what you again obtain. So, if the ripple is small your RMS current is going to be close to your average current. So, then now uh, we divide that RMS current uh, with the uh, current density and so you obtain what should be the gauge of the wire, the cross sectional area of the wire and from there you obtain this that if 12 uh, AWG is something which is uh, going to be suitable because uh, that has a cross sectional area which is uh, greater than this, uh, slightly greater than this 2.67 mm square that we are obtaining from the calculations. Further 
uh, what you do is you calculate the number of turns. So, that is the equation that is uh, here we substitute uh, everything and what we uh, see is that approximately 22 number of turns is what is required. Now, this may be coming in fraction the answer that you may be getting you have to approximate it. Then the air gap, so again you have uh, the equation for calculating the air gap, you substitute all the values there in the air gap and uh, this is the, what you get obtain is approximately 1 mm of air gap is needed for this in designing this inductor. Now uh, let us do some checking, whatever we have designed we obtain the air gap length, uh, we obtain uh, the number of turns, the gauge of the wire and also the selected the core. So, uh, uh, we calculate the Bm. So, what is Bm? You know that Bm is uh, this much of the flux density. So, you have the equation for Bm, you substitute again all the values that uh, you have obtained till now and we obtain this uh, as the Bm. Now, this is the Bm that affects the core loss and so that is what is required for calculating the core loss. We also need to know the B peak the maximum flux density we want to ensure that that is less than the materials uh, flux uh, maximum flux capability. So, B peak again you know the equation. So, this is the equation you substitute and uh, what we obtain is 0.22 Tesla uh, which is less than 0.25 Tesla that we have uh, with what we have chosen or uh, the specification that was given to begin with. So, our design is uh, ok in that respect and uh, then you calculate these code losses. So, for code loss uh, this is the equation that you know. So, you have to find out this k, m and n values for the ferrite core that is chosen and then you substitute and this is what uh, is what we obtain as the core loss density. We multiply it with the volume of the core, so you have the dimensions of the core, you can find out the volume of the core and so the total core losses this is what we obtain. So, this we see that the core loss is very very small. Then you calculate the copper loss, you have the mean length turn, the number of turns and then the resistance per unit length. So, we substitute all that for uh, the wire, the copper wire uh, that we have chosen. And this is the total resistance that we obtain and you multiply it with the square of the current and so 0 0.704 watt is what you obtain. Now, uh, this is very small as compared to the core loss. So, the total loss will be almost equal to your copper loss. So, that is the loss that is going to happen in the inductor that we have designed. Now, this is the AT. AT that uh, we have noted down before. So, you divide this uh, total loss uh, by 80. So, this is what you obtain and this is then uh, the psi is what we then further use to calculate the temperature rise and what we see that the temperature rise is this much 13.55 degree C which is less than 15 degree C that was the specification to begin with. So, the uh, whatever we have designed here is um, is suitable based on uh, is based well suited for the specifications that were chosen um, initially. So, uh, now uh, one of my students uh, will give you a demo of uh, how to practically design this inductor. Hello everyone, this is Nupur and I will show you a design procedure to make a handmade inductor of value 100 micro Henry. The inductor is designed for a buck converter with average inductor current of 8 ampere. The peak inductor current is 8.3125 ampere and the switching frequency is 100 kilohertz. As per the area product calculation, the core that is selected is EE ferrite core which is made by ferrox cube. The dimension of this core is 42 mm into 21 mm into 15 mm. The copper wire that is selected is 12 AWG and uh, this is the 1 mm thick paper that will be used to uh, give the air gap between these two cores. And this is the bobbin where windings will be done and this is the tape that will be required to fix these two cores. Now, I will start winding this enameled copper wire on this bobbin. So, 
this is the first turn then this is the second turn and in this way we will continue with the 22 turns now as you can see the enamel copper wire has been wound on this bobbin with the required number of turn that is 22 the enamel copper wire is secured using the tape now i will assemble the inductor so one e core is placed here and now this uh, paper is placed here to provide the air gap now i will place the second e core and now i will use the tape to secure these two cores now this is the completed inductor now i will measure this inductor using this lcr meter as we can see the inductor value that uh, we are getting is around 99 micro henry 